Hi, I'm Martin, and welcome to Upgrade Your Day, the podcast. I, I'm like a child, really. I still get excited about weather conditions. Yeah. Like this morning, knowing I was meeting oh, you and seeing yeah. how cold and frosty it was and how white it is yeah. everywhere. You know, I'm not one of those people that looks out of the window and thinks, oh, I can't go out in that. It looks awful. I'm the one that wants to throw on my walking boots and go, I have to be out. I get so excited about it. So today I chat to a lovely friend of mine called Nicola. We started our small businesses at the same time. It's lovely to actually have a proper catch up with her. I do need to point out that on this podcast, we are on an early morning ramble. It's frosty, it's misty, it's icy, it's cold. So there will be a lot of crunching, walking, um, coat rubbing, all the sort of sounds that you'd hear when two people are walking and recording a podcast maybe you could listen to this one whilst you're out walking as well maybe that's the way to listen to this but this is my lovely friend Nicola enjoy so I am here on a very early morning what night what time is it Nicola oh it's about eight o'clock on <laughs> Sunday morning <laughs> we are early risers we are here walking through the grounds of Eton College which is beautiful by um, the Thames River Jubilee River we're heading up to and we're doing a podcast on the move we're walking which is nice and if you hear any noises I should warn you it's nature <laughs> 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 there's no lorries or anything like that if you hear any crunching it's because it is absolutely freezing but we like this weather don't we oh it's gorgeous it's like a magical kingdom look at it it is and all the leaves have their own little patterns on because of the ice and they're crunchy and they're orange and brown because obviously it is what is the date today 11th of December yeah it is 12th of December something like that two weeks time it'll be Christmas day oh my gosh have you done your Christmas shopping no I haven't (laughs) I've been too busy sorting out everybody else's I haven't it will happen so we should start by explaining how we met because we both live here in Windsor in the Royal Borough of Windsor Maidenhead and how did we meet exactly where where were Um, we I think I attended one of your very in fact I did I attended the very first ramble that you did yes so I do organize rambles yeah and it was in the lockdown time so people could gather and head out on a ramble and see parts of maybe their local town that they've never seen before (laughs) by following rivers and things yeah Yeah, it was wonderful and you know at that time when everything was locked down it was just a really fantastic opportunity to get out and meet new people wasn't it and I remember we just chatted and chatted and we just hit it off and really got on well didn't we and of course I started um, as well originally it was Ramble Happy now Upgrade Your Day um, just because I've added more things in rambling so I changed the name but Nicola also started something in lockdown just tell us a little bit about what you started um yeah so as you know yeah during um the very first lockdown um the local community were really coming out and helping each other and supporting each other in whatever way they could individually people were exchanging books and baking cakes and doing each other's shopping for them and um i really wanted to give something back to the community as well and a lot of the obvious things had been had sort of been cornered already and one thing that I've always loved doing and I felt that I could give back in some way was photography so I've always been a really really um, keen amateur photographer and wanted to inject some fun back into the community and like everybody I was out walking lots and lots for hours daily exercise doesn't that seem like ages ago now my goodness and some friends and I had been challenging each other to find unusual places or little hidden corners and we'd just been playing this little game amongst ourselves and it was driving us all nuts <laughs> and I thought hang on a minute there's something I can do with this here on a wi- for a wider audience and so I had to think and um, I set up a free to join um, community Facebook group called I Spy Windsor and Eton and I never dreamt I'd do it for as long as I did. Um, but I started to post a photograph of a mystery place or hidden corner, something from an obscure angle, um, at eight o'clock every morning. That's right. Posted it on this group and um, set the challenge of people to go out and find it with their own cameras. Um, And people were adding in the comment sections their memories of that particular place or any family history or any connection they had with it, trying to 
identify the location sometimes from very difficult clues i would add in cryptic clues as well occasionally and the banter that we had within the group was just brilliant we had about two thousand people playing along at one point and people were learning more and more about their local area and discovering more history um, and getting out and about it was giving people a purpose to go out at that very peculiar time when a lot of people were isolated a lot of people were you know stuck in the house on their own and it was helping people to have a reason to go out on that daily walk. and also for you to for you to get enjoyment out of doing it for people to enjoy doing it and it costs nothing yes like exactly. literally costs nothing how great is that yeah no and it, it was really good fun and in actual fact some of the people that i'd never met at the time have subsequently become quite good friends of mine but also friends of each other we really had a good little community group going on there and as the momentum grew over the months it was weird because i would be walking through windsor or eaton and i would see people with their phones looking puzzled and you could hear them going oh i know it's down here somewhere <laughs> or i've seen this and it was yeah it was really funny and people would come up to me and go oh you're that i spy lady aren't you you're driving me mad you've had um, worse haven't you yeah. <laughs> yes we don't talk about that um but no, it was it, it really gathered momentum. I thought perhaps I'd carry on doing it for a month. Um, and the months rolled on and rolled on and we kept finding more and more places. More and more people would join in and we do you know what? We posted every day yeah. for a year. Yeah. Extraordinary. When you think back on it, it just seems like how did you how did we do that? How yes. did you do that? You know? Yeah. The momentum to keep doing it. Yeah. Driven um, by the community really. Yeah. I mean it meant that I had to be out on my bike or walking every single morning before anybody else <laughs> posting that picture. And um you were playing along at one point, I know you were, but every yeah. Tuesday then do you remember Chocolate Tuesday? <laughs> oh I'll always <laughs> remember a chocolate yeah. Tuesday. You don't have to tell me twice. So I was going out and hiding a bar of, of chocolate somewhere, <laughs> whether that was at the feet of the Irish Guard statue up by the castle or hidden by the Hurricane Hawker aeroplane. But the first person to that point would be able to claim that bar of chocolate and it Brilliant. became known as Chocolate Tuesday. <laughs> and some of the real eager beavers in the group would um, literally wait by their phones in the morning during lockdown for that eight o'clock ping it yes. became known as it was just strange how it um, took off really and at eight o'clock the phone would ping a mystery picture would appear and people would start squirreling away trying to trying to find it and that led you from taking all these little photos of secret hidden places mm. in Windsor and Eaton. That then led you on to what you're doing now, didn't it? It did, yeah. And I, I never really meant for that to happen. So it's been a really lovely um, sort of natural growth of things, really. Um, a couple of people said, oh, gosh, Nicola, you take really good pictures. You should try and do something with them. You should try and sell them. Um, and during lockdown, like so many others, my job was affected. I used to work in um, live events and um, marketing and um, indoor events, which was obviously closed straight away. So I did kind of have to reinvent myself. Um, I found myself home educating two teenage children overnight, which they didn't really want. <laughs> um, you know, I was mum, not a teacher. Um, my partner was at home suddenly an awful lot more. He was previously away in America a lot. And so we all found ourselves in this really peculiar mix that we'd not been in before, mm. like, like so many others, like yourself yeah. as well. You know, you were reinventing yourself. Um, and as I say, I'd always loved taking photos and thought, you know what, I will try and do something with them. And um, so the very first prints that I sold were framed collections from the I Spy game, um, designed as pieces of wall art to hang, um, but also designed as a conversation point and a game for people to play. So you could gift it to somebody and they would have to try and work out where those photographs were. And on the reverse of each frame, I do add the location details. I type up the history of each place. Um, if people want to sort of cheat and find them. But again, the idea was to evoke happy memories of some of those times and create some interesting artwork. Yeah. And it's it's grown from there, really. I've now created about 40 or 50 
different styles and different collections of images. Yeah. And explain some of the... Well, actually, if anybody's listening to us now and they want to look up what we're talking about, just give your details quickly, um, where they can look up your website. You've got a website, haven't you? Got a website, got an Instagram. Your website is... WindsorandEatonPhotoArt.co.uk Yeah, so if anyone's listening they want to have a little look up, have a little look up now and, and have a look while we're listening to this. Um, because explain some of your... You have little collections, don't you? Some of mine are front do- the front door front one is doors, my, one of been, my favourite. Yeah, that has been one of my best sellers actually. And um, because I took all, no, nearly all of these photographs during lockdown, I very much wanted to put some messages of positivity through yes. all of them as well. Whether that was an image of a rainbow or a sunrise. But I quite often use quotes of positivity through them as well. But the doors one, for example. Um, they're all front doors. Some of them are in, on historic buildings. Some of them are on pubs. Some of them are private uh, dwellings. But all are really interesting and attractive doors in one way or another, all photographed around Windsor and Eton, all photographed in the rain, actually, <laughs> oh, so really? that the colours oh. are really, really rich and there's no shadows on any of them. Right, yeah. But oh, yeah. in the centre of that particular collage, there's 40 doors that I used, but I photographed over 250. Um, I've used the door of the Hope pub oh, yeah. in Windsor. Not because it was the most attractive door, actually, but because I loved the wording Hope yeah. above yeah, the door. Of and so that word sits in the centre yeah. of that collection, and it was so relevant to lockdown. And um, I've done similar things with some of my floral pictures. You know, if you look really Floor, carefully, yeah. you'll just find a little hidden butterfly. Yeah. Or, um, yeah, like I say, a hidden rainbow or something. So people have said that, um, which is lovely feedback to receive, that my photographs bring joy and bring happiness, which isn't that a lovely thing to say? Absolutely. You can do that. And I also think, you know, going back a couple of years, what was so lovely was we all found ourselves a little bit more mindful, yes. <laughs> whether we liked it or not. Yes. And, I mean, we used to message one another because we'd go into the town centre, completely shut down, and what you used to be able to do is just walk really slowly and notice and yeah. look up and look down and stand in front of a pub or a restaurant, which is oh. usually what people in the window yeah. unless it's like late 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 in the early hours of the morning late yeah, at night yes. and just notice it and some of the, the pubs you just go crikey it's actually beautiful but you've never seen you've never no. looked at it like that you've never had a chance to no exactly and actually that's another one of my best selling frames actually is the pubs of Windsor and Eton oh, yes, who's great. ever looked at all the pub signs in such detail and I've got a collection of 15 pub signs They've all got a royal connection, so it's like the Duke, and it's right. like the Prince, or the Queen Charlotte, or the King and Castle. We've all got a royal collection, but I've done a collage just of those pub signs, and that was just me, exactly as you've just described, walking around during lockdown, looking at those businesses, thinking, you know, I wonder what's going to become of them, I wonder if yeah. we can get through this, and of course we have, yeah. very happily, good to see all those pubs thriving and bustling, and, and again, they've reinvented themselves, yes. and they've put, you know, those lovely garden spaces in haven't they yeah yeah but at the time it was a question of standing there thinking well you know will we get back into pubs and yeah. do all our lovely social things again and of course we have so yeah it's a great time of reflection and thinking about all those things were taken for granted and um meeting new people you yes, know yeah. like you and um appreciating things like you say in a different way and so have you always been interested in photography is that yes. something you've you've done all your life you've had that yeah. kind of eye for a photo apparently everyone always says i've had a really good eye for a photo and yeah. i've always loved taking pictures so um whenever we go on holiday i'm always up before the rest of the family to go and catch sunrise right, yeah some of my most favorite places are St Ives in Cornwall and the oh, colours yeah. down there. I just think, I actually feel guilty if I don't get up and see all <laughs> yes. those things. Um, I, I'm like a child, really. I still get excited about weather conditions. Yeah. Like this morning, knowing I was meeting oh, you and seeing yeah. how cold and frosty it was and how white it is yeah. everywhere. 
you know, I'm not one of those people that looks out of the window and thinks, oh, I can't go out in that. It looks awful. I'm the one that wants to throw on my walking boots and go, I have to be out. I get so excited about it. I mean, it. right now, my face is starting to feel that coldness, like yeah. a numbness, but it's lovely. I love it. Like, we'll never have this day again. No. We'll never have this moment. Yeah. You'll never see this exact frost and all these beautiful patterns. I just adore it and I'm thankful for every day. Yeah. I just I really do love it. Huge amount of gratitude for Yeah, I think we've had some some fun times over the years and you know and I'm thankful for meeting lots of new small businesses and people that I really admire and people that have worked really hard yeah. against the odds and reinvented yeah. themselves as well but I think that's it reinvention maybe that should be the name of this podcast oh yeah that should be it there it, we darling. are <laughs> that we, we found it, it? <laughs> <laughs> there it is because <laughs> reinvention we like Madonna I can see the song coming on next <laughs> as well <laughs> oh don't I'll have to pay for that um, but it is that because there's also a place um, I will name them actually I'm sure they won't mind but Gregory and Tapping you know that oh yes it was basically a um, they, it was a shop that sold a lot of Plants, plant, plant pots, pots cacti. sort of notebooks and things, yeah. um, and they were sort of plodding along. And then, you know, obviously the whole uh, COVID hit, and then they changed and they moved to a shop in Windsor, and they were selling the same sort of things. But then suddenly, there were seats outside, and they had a coffee machine, which is what a lot of people are doing. And and gin and tonic, gin and tonic, because Gregory and Tapping G and T. Yeah. Uh, and then now yeah. they've got all the heaters outside yeah, brilliant, they've got all the seating it? inside you can go for a drink and a shop yeah. and I've now noticed on their social media that they've actually started to put on bands as well have they I didn't so know that actually so they're putting on live music great. in the shop yeah it's brilliant isn't, isn't that it? great like they've no, gone that far and I bet I mean I'd like to think they are that I bet they're having the best time reinventing this and kind of making it something mm, new mm. and wonderful and whatever you know whatever anyone's opinions are about the high stream what's happening it is going down that kind of entertainment route. That's yes. where you go for your entertainment, yep. not so much your shopping. But times change. We just have to, whatever whatever um, we do, really, we go along with it. And if it works and you're making money and you're paying your bills, that's what you've got to do, isn't that's it? That's it. Yeah, that's it. And we've, as, as, you know, as consumers, we've created some of those habits ourselves as well, haven't we? Yes. And we all miss the high street as it was. But we've sort of been... Look at these. Aren't they beautiful? This frozen stuff. We've been... Um, sort of forced into spending online because of all the retail units closing but yeah. actually we've all adapted to this new sort of spending habit as well yeah. so yeah well, again, I agree it's, it's with quite, you. Do you know what it is it's quite a mindful thing as well the fact that we give ourselves a hard time because we're told support local shop yes. local and then when I, I think I've mentioned this before but when my mum was struggling to find Christmas presents mm, for me mm. like what am I going to get in this year she knows I love lavender I love lavender I absolutely adore it and so she put into um, Amazon or something lavender presents and of course if we know there's lavender yeah. cookies there's lavender, yeah. lavender you know, shoes yeah. <laughs> so she's like well this can arrive tomorrow yes. now she felt bad at that but she felt very excited that I was going to get lavender cookies which yeah. I've never had in my life <laughs> but we're always made to sort of feel bad about it and I think yeah. sometimes you have to put that in a place you have to you have to embrace that you don't very, you in yes, a way you have to kind of like not not make these things you shouldn't have to feel bad about something that other people are doing no. um, and what we have to do is move forward in a positive way and kind of I guess you know could get very political but people need to be paid the right sorts of money mm, and we need mm. to kind of adjust things but if shopping's online and that's what's going to happen in the future like with music yes. don't know about you but we had about three record shops in yeah. my town yeah, exactly. when they shut I was gutted but now oh I used to love browsing <laughs> through record stores didn't you yes. looking through and it's just oh. not something that you know my kids have ever done really no. but how great that now I have a phone on me and I've got every song that's yeah. ever literally been made yeah. that's that's quite we should embrace that as yeah, well you absolutely. know we, should, we shouldn't feel bad about um the fact that we you know we're missing out on looking at records although they've now made a comeback yes yeah vinyls made a comeback. real resurgence yeah yes yeah, so you know these things go around in circles don't they <gasps> darling i think it's snowing is it or yeah. is that the trees melting wow i mean it is it's cold enough to snow Look, you've got it? snow in your hair oh how wonderful oh and it beautiful princess anna it's absolutely stunning. Look how few people are out loving yeah. this moment. 
and enjoying it. People yeah. roll out of bed at about 11 o'clock mm. and go, what have you been doing all morning? I just <laughs> no. adore this. I am, I am such a big kid with weather. You know, I go chasing for rainbows. I throw on my coat knowing that it's going to start raining, but the sun is out. Yeah. And I know there's going to be a rainbow. I'll yeah. be up for sunrise like you. Yeah. And still out the same day watching sunset. I just can't get enough of it. I'm such an outdoorsy person. It's lovely, isn't it? Yes. Look at these um, cobwebs. Look at that. Oh, look at those. Oh, get a photo of that. I mean, just look I'm all getting, that This is what we do. We get, our, or get our phones out and start taking pictures. <laughs> oh, look, you can go straight through it. I know. Isn't that incredible? Just to, I mean, how it's many a people? It's cobweb on a light fixing. And you can post that one up. But it is literally just, it's stunning. Look at that. But isn't that important to always look up, look yeah. down, up, look around? Down. Yeah, yeah. I took a photo yesterday, actually. There was, the, I always look in the opposite direction to everyone else. Mm. Um, just to see what yeah. else is going on. Yeah. I'm not really much of a of a rule follower in that sense. But there was the most spectacular pink sky over the river down in Windsor. Oh. But I looked behind me rather than do the obvious thing. Yeah. And behind me I saw this incredible tree stump glittering. I mean it looked like it was covered in deer monte. It was so pretty with all the frost on it. And ivy covered in sort of snowy little icicles. And this, with the sun, sunset, sunrise, sorry, poking up over the top, it was just magnificent. That's lovely. But it was looking the opposite direction yeah, to yeah. the obvious view. Yes. So always look around you. Yes. That, that is also quite a, uh, a mindfulness thing to do, Nicola. Yes. That's actually quite a good little, um, quite a good little saying, really. Well, I love your the, the concept of your three-minute upgrade. Yes. And it's too easy to think that, oh, I can't build that into my day. I haven't got the time. But I do without realising it. And for me, it is when I'm out walking and when yeah. I'm out with my camera, just pausing yeah. just to listen to those birds. Or today, feel the crunch of that frost yeah. and these leaves. And just be thankful, as you say, just savour this moment. That's one, one thing that you taught me a couple of years ago, I think, that whatever's going on in the world, mm -hmm. right here, right now, it's fine, isn't it? Yeah. And so aren't we lucky? Yeah. And my dear mum always uses that quote. Ooh, God. Oh, God. Crikey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Listeners, we've no. uh, we've just hit the, we've just hit some tarmac, and Nicola Black literally <laughs> hit the tarmac. <laughs> Black eyes alert! Oh but my you know what? Gosh. I'm even thankful for that. How funny! Hang on, my lace is undone lace. as well. Oh Lord. God, you almost went over then, darling. God, I know. Look at that. <laughs> that would have been funny. You could get 250 quid for that if you send it into. Um, have I been framed or whatever it is? Oh, oh hilarious! See. That's the well. yin and yang of life. <laughs> it's so lovely and pretty, oh. and then suddenly it comes up oh. and you trip up. That's dear, that, oh that's dear. really important. And that's before we've been to Gregory and Tapping for a gin and tonic. <laughs> oh, for gin and tonic. That, do you know what? And what about a Bailey's hot chocolate? Oh, yeah. I always think of you with a Bailey's. Mm. And what you need to do is get a Lindsay teddy bear, chop its head off, and pour Bailey's. Now, somebody Baileys told me about this last oh, night. Oh, my goodness. Bailey's into a Linden chocolate bear bear or a reindeer oh my god freeze the baileys and it comes out like a mcdonald's chocolate sort of thick oh shake consistency pop it into a little linda bear yeah. there you go little baileys cocktail See, that's the sort of shop i'd like to open oh, yeah. like we were saying earlier you can't just have a oh, shop nowadays no. you need to have an entertainment element it's got to be that would be it come and have a little baileys experience. in my shop oh my goodness <laughs> because we should mention as well that um obviously a lot of our photography is based on swans because here in Windsor we are surrounded by them and all it takes is to see a couple of little swans by a little tree Ooh. and my camera is yes, out so I'm like exactly oh, and they're so wonderful resistant. and we have a um, swan support here that look after all the swans yeah, yeah they're um, a great and they're team. having a bit of a trouble at the moment with avian flu aren't they yes so it's gone a little bit oh, it's, yeah, it's really okay. sad and they're working their socks off to try and well, try and look after and save as many swans as possible well, at the moment. Well, it's, it's really devastated the Windsor flock, actually, yeah. and um, I adore the swans. Um, so if you see the swan support team out and about locally, do give them a little wave or a smile because they are having a tough time. Yeah. And these ladies know these swan families 
you know, individually. Swans stay in couples, as you know, for their entire adult lives mm. and look after the cygnets for the first year, 18 months, until they kick them out. Um, but yeah, I've donated some photographs, actually, to the Swan Support 2023 calendar. Yes. And their Christmas cards this year, which I'm very proud of to support such a, a worthy charity. But I was actually involved in um, helping one in a rescue, gosh, months ago. And they're big. They're big birds. They're right. really heavy. Yeah. And I and I held one for the, the Swan Support crew while they were getting the vehicle ready. Yeah. And I mean, he was really big and heavy, this creature. And but powerful. Powerful, mm. but totally trusted me. It was yeah. a really serene moment, yes. actually. I wasn't worried that he was going to peck me at all. He was completely calm. But yeah, such beautiful creatures. I adore them. And, and the um, lovely mindful activity watching swans. Yes. I could watch them for oh, hours. Me too. Me too. Let's hope they get through this current um, yeah. crisis. It's really, really sad to so see. So just going back to what you were saying about working in the corporate world and then moving in to the lockdown and creating your own business how do you feel like mental health wise or for your for you how did you feel you dealt with that do you think it was that setting up your own business that helped that um, or were you sort of grasping to get back into work because obviously that's how you know you're making your money yeah yeah I, well, as you know, I think when you work for yourself, it is incredibly hard work is the first thing. And you end up working all the time, whether you're getting paid for it or not, mm. actually. Because here I am trying to take photos, then edit them and then curate them. Um, that's something that you have to be in the right mood for. It comes from from within you know it comes from your soul it's like being a dancer you've got yeah. to want to do it and be in the right mood for it I then frame them so I have to source all the framing kits and the framing materials all of those contracts take time to establish we then have to market them so yes. setting up and writing copy on a website um negotiating our way into craft fairs and art markets I've done lots of pop-up shops now I've got myself into Daniel's and a couple of the other local stores that doesn't just happen no. that all takes conversations and sort of nurturing relationships and time and you know dealing with sales inquiries that often don't come to anything yeah. um, it's wonderful when the when the emails start pinging saying oh you've got another online sale or when I'm doing mm -hmm. live events and people come up and say oh Nicola you know your photographs bring bring such joy and they're so cheerful and they're so bright mm -hmm. and colourful it's lovely but none of these things just happen it's, yeah. it's really really hard work and I know that you know that well we have it in the entertainment industry where when you know the, the biggest thing which is now gradually changing is oh come and do this for nothing it's yes. exposure yes and then you go well actually I've done a lot of those yeah and I've had a lot of exposure and it's not brought anything yeah, and then too. they're shocked when you say no yeah um, but I think we're getting a little bit more um, we're owning it more now yeah. as performers are going actually unless I'm being paid I'm not going to unless it's for charity yes. or, or charity you believe in yeah. but I've said to you in the past I could spend my whole year doing gigs and not get paid a penny yeah, yeah. no I agree with you and I've got my exhibition running um, which is a huge honour at the moment I've got a month long exhibition running at the Old Court Arts Centre in Windsor so it's free please do pop along and see it if you're around but mm -hmm. I've had so many people say to me I oh, want you lucky to have that and I am because they approach me to to attend and to set it up but the amount of work Martin yeah in framing up all those images writing little stories and descriptions about each one physically mounting all of those thinking about where they were all going to go planning the opening night preparing you know marketing leaflets and talking to the local press and the local bloggers to get people along I mean the work is extraordinary and then just planning the opening night with the food and the catering and the fizz and everything don't get me wrong it was lovely and I'm super proud of it it's brilliant but all such hard work yeah. and that was right before I went and did my 
pop-up shop in Daniels and right after I um, manage the, the Windsor Guildhall Christmas market you know it's such hard work and I think that some people don't necessarily always appreciate that so when you are a little one-man band like we are you have to be incredibly multi- multifaceted really and be yeah. able to turn your hand at anything don't you and you do generate your own luck I think yes. you generate it it's not just aren't you lucky it's like well actually I've, I've done a lot of work behind the yeah. scenes to create yeah. that luck that's that's what you have to remember yes you know people say it all the time don't they or I think that's also the other thing about social media is because people post a lot of positives yes people go oh aren't you lucky going there on your holiday and it's yeah. like well you know I've saved for two years <laughs> and I've done a lot of whatever it might be mm. to, to save that money or it's not really luck I've just generated it well we only see those shiny positive yeah. bits now on social yeah. media don't we and yeah. again we're all kind of we've fallen prey to that a little bit because you know who wants to see the you know the boring niggly behind the scenes bit mm. so listen what I need to ask you is your ultimate upgrade Ooh. so a few little questions yep um, just in the current time what is your favourite day of the week oh gosh time and day of the week um, any day of the week I guess a Saturday Saturday knowing you've got Saturday and Sunday coming sunrise it has to be a Saturday morning sunrise yeah you know that you've got yeah. a new day coming it's a fresh start yeah everything's peaceful oh it's a beautiful time of day isn't it that's lovely and who do you like spending time with who is it yourself your family is there a really good friend what 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 would be your sort of perfect who would you like to walk on that sunrise with yeah my family really we yeah. all lead such busy lives at the moment you know two teenagers one's a rower one's a, a dancer and a performer my other half works really hard family time I think is really family important time. yep and um your favourite food? What is your favourite food? Well, it could sorts. be an item or it could be, you know. The first thing that springs to mind is Thai curry Ooh. because it evokes such wonderful memories of yeah. holidays in Thailand, which is like Cornwall, another one of my most favourite places. Um, but you can't beat a good old glass of red wine on a cold and winter's re- evening, can Thai you? Thai curry and a red wine. Oh, gosh, there you go, you see. In Cornwall. Oh, in Cornwall. brilliant. So that's what I was going to say. Your favourite place. Your favourite place. Accessible. Um, St Ives. St Ives. We catch the train down there. Four and a half hours. Easy. No matter what time of year. We've yeah. been at all times of year and it's... I spent a lot of time in Cornwall as a as a child, so that mm. evokes lots and lots of happy memories. The waves crashing and the seagulls squawking, right? Yeah, and all the foods and things down there. You know, good old Amazing. Cornish pasty. You can't beat Cornwall. Co- oh, love it. Clotted cream tea. Oh, <gasps> don't go. Oh. That'll be my breakfast now. Yeah. There and you what go. about music? What's your favourite music? Whether it's a band, singer, genre. What- <laughs> What um, do you love? What really excites you? Well, bits of everything, really. I suppose General. I grew up with 80s music. I'm just as happy listening to a bit of Capital Radio. I love classical Capital. music as well. Right, nice, yeah. All types. Um, I love a bit of Rag and Bone Man, <laughs> um, which is random. <laughs> a bit of festival You're coming across as a bit yeah. of festival Oh, I love moment. a festival. Oh, I like that. Um, and what about a scent? Give me a scent. What's your favourite smell scent freshly cut grass oh, being nice. outdoors yeah. um ground coffee that obvious one fresh cut grass oh. um rain you know is oh, always nice. a fresh smell isn't it a mixture of nature mm, smells definitely yeah so from what we've gathered your ultimate upgrade will be a saturday morning sunrise yep. in st ives oh, with yes. your family you probably Perfect. driven to the coast listening yeah. to some 80s music or a bit of you dance do classics the summer, so there's lots yeah. of the sm- <laughs> smell of rain in the summer and freshly <laughs> cut grass and then that evening you're going to have a thai curry and yeah. a glass of red wine lovely that is your ultimate oh. upgrade and as i always say to people you know that's not that hard to achieve no, because no, you exactly. could we were talking earlier about having a little bit of a break in the new year and stuff book that trip to yeah, St Ives have that Saturday morning as your oh, ultimate upgrade just beautiful yeah well we stayed down there in August actually and we found the most incredible apartment with this sort of 180 degree view of mm. the harbour yeah and it was just like a painting you oh. know no matter what time of day it was whether the tide was high whether the tide was low whether it was cloudy whether it was sunny whether it was dusk 
just like looking at a different Monet painting, no matter what time of day. And how, beautiful. how wonderful is that? Yeah, yeah. And what would be your um, home retreat? You've heard me talk about home retreat before. What would be if today was your day? I don't know if your family are there or not. What would you do as a home retreat where it's just about you, looking well, after you? Well, that's a really good question, and I very rarely take time just for me, and I, that needs to change, actually. Mm-hmm. I'm always busy. I'm always on the go. Yeah. I'm one of those very high-energy people. Um, to have time on a winter's day, I would need it to have been out and had some fresh air. Yeah. I'd feel very... <gasps> I was had a mouthful of dirt oh then. Oh, Lord. Oh, my goodness. It nearly went. Gosh, right, back let's on get grass, onto back this on crunchy grass. grass again. Look at that. I mean, have you ever seen it no. quite as the misty? The river is so misty, you literally have the bank, the grass goes to the river, and then it's just whiteness. There's That's nothing stunning, can't see isn't anything. it? Wow. Yeah. Um, in answer to your question, yeah, so I would have had to have been out. I couldn't stay indoors all day. Mm-hmm. I have to have some fresh air. Once I've done that, maybe a nice hot bubble bath, put some PJs on. Yeah. Um, maybe today I'll go back and cook a lovely roast dinner, roast dinner for the family, a little Christmas film, film, Home Alone or Last Christmas, a bit of George Michael <laughs> thrown in there maybe. Um, yeah, and just slow the pace down a little bit. Yeah. But probably get out again later for another walk, believe it or not. So a little bit of an active day is your kind of home retreat. You still need to have that little bit of getting out and a bit of exercise, a little bit of fresh air. Yeah, oh, fresh air. I'm a fresh airaholic, absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. you wouldn't get up, tuck yourself under a blanket and be there all day. You'd No, I couldn't do that. It would make me feel really, you know, (laughs) ants in my pants. I couldn't do it. (laughs) Yes. I love that. I wish I could sometimes to slow it down. Yeah. Um, I've actually got some lovely pamper treatments booked for January, and I haven't had anything like that for ages, which is a bit sad. Nice. But that would be go- gorgeous to have a massage yeah. and a facial and just have a bit of me time as yeah. well. It is important. Absolutely. Well, darling, thank you so much for chatting today. I think our reinvention podcast oh. <laughs> is, you know what, don't be afraid of it. Don't yes. be afraid of reinvention. And you know what I always say to you, I said it this morning about chucking mud, seeing what sticks. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're not, you know, spending Throwing too much money or, yeah. or upsetting people or whatever. Yeah. Whatever you need to do, just try it. Just give it a shake up, oh. whether it's a hobby or a business. Yeah. I think reinvention, sometimes people feel a bit scared about it, don't they? They feel a little bit like, oh, it's a bit... A bit scary, but as what's know, the worst that can happen? Really, it doesn't work, and you try something else. I think you have to be a little bit thick skinned. You have yes, to, of course, be prepared to have people question what you're doing and, and be aware of that. Just resilience, resilience, and get into meditation if you yeah. if you need to. <laughs> if you're not thick skinned, like a lot of us aren't, yes. some of us are very sensitive. Sometimes gratitude. And meditation can help yeah. a lot with how you... <gasps> Look at these I here. know. Wow. We need to stop and take some photos these, um, of What that. are these, darling? Weeds. <laughs> <laughs> now, Natalie from a previous podcast would be offended that I oh, thought they were flowers. That's they are cow parsley. I think. I mean, mist and I, ice. Seriously, actually, we have to stop yeah. and take a picture of that. We're going we're to is... stop now and do some bit of photography, which is what yes. we do. Um, thank you so much, darling. Can you remind people of where to find you on Facebook, Instagram, etc.? Yes, Instagram is Windsor and Eaton Photo Art and my website windsoreatonphotoart.co.uk and I'm locally based and I've got lots of Christmas presents ready for people amazing yeah and you sell on your website so thank you so much for chatting all things lovely reinvention photography and just about life really friendship and yeah and and doing new things yeah absolutely no it's great to see you as always darling thank you let's get our cameras out and get snapping perfect thank you darling (laughs) thank you sweetheart thank you so much So there we go. That was Mikola from Windsor and Eaton Photo Art. So lovely to get a chance to actually have a good chat to her and a good catch up. So I hope you enjoyed that. As always, you can check out everything that I'm up to on upgradeyourday.co.uk. Just a quick reminder that my calendars for 2023 are still available and they will be through till about mid-January in 2023. So if you would like to get one of those, then just all order it online now head to the website head to the shop and you can pick one up also at the moment if you are listening to this in 
2022 you will see that there's a bundle which is the companion book the calendar the upgrade your day pen tote bag all now on sale for 19.95 christmas bundle everything for 19.95 an absolute bargain so if you want to pick that up and get on the upgrade your day train then you can do so so thank you for listening have a great week a great day whatever you're up to enjoy and remember to try and give your day a little upgrade whatever that may be take care (laughs) 